This video is devoted to several matrix multiplication examples. Matrix multiplication doesn't need to be boring, so I'll certainly try to make it as interesting as possible. And first is this example, this example we've already considered, and the answer is a one by one matrix, and the only value in that matrix is 20. Now we're going to consider the product of the same two matrices in the opposite order. And the nice thing about matrices whose dimensions are opposite of each other, this one is 1 by 4, and this one is 4 by 1, is that they can be multiplied in any order. If you put them in any order, that product will be compatible. So here we have them in the order where the first one is a 4 by 1, and the second one is 1 by 4. So inner dimensions match once again, and these uh, matrices are compatible in this product. So let's figure out what the answer is. And of course, the first step is figuring out the shape of the answer. And you can do it by considering the dimensions. The inner dimensions drop out. We're left with a 4 by 4 matrix. That's one way to do it. The way I prefer doing it is interpreting the problem from the column's point of view. This matrix product is inviting us to find four different linear combinations of actually this one column. So each linear combination will only have a single term, and that single term will be proportionate to, proportional to this column. So the answer is a 4 by 4 matrix. And the first column in the matrix is a linear combination of this column, where the coefficient comes from this column. So it's just 1 times this column. All right, moving on to the next column. It'll be once again a linear combination of this column where the coefficients come from here. So it'll just be twice that column. All right, moving on to the third one. Same thing, linear combination of this column. So just a multiple of this column and it's this multiple. So 12, 9, 6 and excuse me, three, all right, and we're down to one column, so it'll be four times this column, 16, 12, eight, and four. All right, so one follow-up question. This example is complete, but I do have one follow-up question, which is, what is the rank of this matrix. Think back to our rank discussion and answer what's the rank of this matrix? What's the dimension of the column space or equivalently the dimension of the row space? And of course the rank of this matrix, the rank of this matrix is 1. That's because all of the columns of this matrix are multiples of this column. So they belong to the one dimensional subspace of R4 that's spanned by this single column. This is one times the column, twice the column, three times the column, four times the column. So there's only one linearly independent column and the rank of this matrix is one. And this is a special case of a more general observation, which is that the rank of the matrix of the resulting matrix is always no greater than the rank of this matrix. That's because the columns of this matrix always consists of linear combinations of the column of this matrix. So there is no getting out of the column space of this matrix. So the column space of the matrix on the right hand side is always a subspace, not necessarily a proper subspace, and that's not necessarily smaller, but it's always either the subspace, it's always either the same as the column space or a proper subspace of the column space of this matrix. All right, let's consider a few more examples. All right, let's continue with these two examples. These two examples also have two of the same matrices, and because their dimensions are opposite, two by three, three by two, we can once again multiply them in either order. So let's consider this order first. What's the dimension of the result? Well, it's two by two. Okay, so we have to consider two different linear combinations of these three columns. So starting with the first one, 
So let's do it one entry at a time. So we're doing the linear combination of these three columns, coefficients coming from here. So this will be the first column of the answer. And the answer is, I'll do the running sum as always, two, two, one. And the second entry is three, one, zero. Okay, we're halfway done with this question. Moving on to the second column, linear combinations of the same columns with coefficients coming from here. So the first entry is doing the running sum, two, two, zero, and three, three, one. And this completes this example. And there's something very interesting. We got these nice, quote unquote, pivot columns, columns that are perfect for decomposition. So the only intriguing question is whether when we multiply these matrices in the opposite order, whether we're going to get something like that again. Ideally, not ideally, but maybe, just maybe, that will be an interesting follow-up question. We'll get three of these pivot columns as a result of this product. Well, let's see what we get. So the answer is, of course, well, that should be the first question. What is the dimension of the answer? And it is three different linear combinations of these two columns. So because these columns are from R3, this matrix will be three entries tall. And because it's three different linear combinations, it'll be a three by three matrix. All right, so we'll start with the first column. To get the first column, we need to consider linear combination where we take two of this column and three of this one. So we're going to have five. Well, that already dashes our hopes of having these pivot columns as the answer in this matrix. Well, wasn't meant to be. Minus two. And the minus eight. All right, for the second column, we just need to take twice the second column because it's zero of the first column plus two of the second. So two, zero, negative four. Two, zero, negative four. And finally, in the last column, we should, cons we should have the sum of the first of these two columns because it's one of the first plus one of the second. And that will be two, negative one, negative three. Two, negative one, negative three. So we're done with this example. Not even close to having pivot columns, not at all. But that, but the follow-up question, but the interesting follow-up question still remains. And let me paraphrase it this way. It's a slightly different question. Is it possible to come up with two matrices so that when you multiply them this way, two matrices, one three by two, the other one two by three, so that when you multiply them one way, you get this matrix, and when you multiply them the other way, you get one zero zero, zero one zero, zero zero one. So, I'll let you think about this question. It's very interesting and related to something that we discussed in the connection with the previous two examples. Okay, this completes th these two examples. Let's do one or two more. All right, let's consider these two examples. All of the matrices in these examples are square and three by three. They're obviously compatible and the results will also be three by three. Now let me also introduce a couple new terms. The first term is the diagonal of a matrix. So this, it's the diagonal of a matrix. It's the entries that are in the same row as column. So one, one, two, two, row two, column two, row three, column three. This is called the diagonal. Sometimes the main diagonal. So here's the diagonal, here's the diagonal, here is the diagonal. And all of these matrices are also called triangular because then all of the non-zero entries are contained to a triangle above the diagonal and including the diagonal. So these matrices are called upper triangular, and these matrices are called lower triangular. Upper triangular matrices are characterized by having all zeros below the diagonal. All the entries below the diagonal are zero. And lower triangular matrices are characterized by zeros above the diagonal. 
So let's multiply these two lower triangular matrices and see what we get. All right, so there will, the answer will consist obviously of three columns. They will all be linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left, coefficients coming from the columns of the matrix on the right. So for the first column of the answer, we need to take the linear combination of these columns in proportions 1, 0, 0. So that just means the first column of the matrix on the left, and this part of the answer is 1, 0, 0. All right, for the second column, the coefficients come from here, and it's inviting us to add the first two columns of this matrix, so 3, 5, 0. All right, now for the final answer. Well, now the coefficients are a little bit more involved, so let me just copy them here so I don't have to remember them, and do this one entry at a time. So for the first entry, we have 2, 0, 3. 0, minus 5, 1. I'm doing the running sum, as always. And 9. Okay, and this example is completed. And what do we notice? Well, we notice that the result is once again an upper triangular matrix. So from this, uh, we can conclude more or less that the product of any two upper triangular matrices is another upper triangular matrix. If you really want to convince yourself of this, then just replace these numbers with letters, and you will see that no matter what the values are, these three entries will be zero. And that should convince you that the product of any two upper triangular matrices is upper triangular. Let's see what happens with lower triangular matrices. We know the structure of what's going on, so let's just fill in the numbers. So actually the first linear combination is the most involved, so I'll copy the coefficients here. And in the first entry we have 1. In the second entry we have 5 plus 2 plus 5, 7. And in the final entry we have 9 plus 18, 27. Okay, and the rest should be simpler. So in the second column we're invited to subtract third from second. It's second minus third, so it'll be 0, 5, negative 3. And finally, one of the last column, so 0, 0, 9. And lo and behold, another lower triangular matrix. And this, of course, generalizes the product of any two lower triangular matrices is another lower triangular matrix. It's true for these two matrices. It's true for any 3x3 three three matrices with arbitrary entries. And it's also true in any dimension. So for 5x5, five 10x10, five, ten ten, and by n, it's true for all of those. So that completes these two examples. All right, two final examples for this video. These two matrix products. They both feature the same two 3x3 three three matrices being multiplied in opposite orders. We'll analyze this example fully and sell this one as an exercise and as a starting point for a future video. And these examples illustrate a couple of bigger ideas. One of them is to once again think of matrix multiplication as an action. What, what is the effect of this matrix upon this matrix? So let's see. So we once again recognize our rows, columns here, and we can think of these individual columns as actions. For example, we're familiar with this column, and, we'll know, and we know that it'll pick out the second column of this matrix. So this is a column picker, more specifically, the second column picker. So the first column of the answer is 2, 5, 8. All right, what about this column? Once again, a column picker. It'll pick the first column, 1, 4, 7. Please be patient, an even bigger action description is coming up. Well, first let's consider this third column. Once again, a column picker, the last column of this matrix, 3, 6, 9. 3, 6, 9. And the entire example is completed without too much work. Now, how would you describe the action of this matrix cumulatively? Well, 
it's a column switcher. Whatever matrix comes on the left, the effect of being multiplied by this matrix will be to switch the first two columns. So you can think of this matrix right here as the column switcher. And that's a very uh, productive way of thinking about matrix multiplication if such a perspective is available. And it certainly is for this example. And there you go. We've completed this example and we observed that the effect of multiplying by this matrix is to switch the first two columns of the matrix on the left. Now do this as an exercise. This involves the same two matrices. It's just that this uh, sparse looking matrix appears on the left. So what will be the effect of this matrix upon this one? Or maybe it'll be better, a better way to think about this product as this matrix acting upon this one from the left. So what will be uh, this result? What will be the effect of this matrix upon this matrix? And more importantly, will the answer be the same when you consider two different products of the same matrices in opposite orders?